Hi, and welcome back to Chase's Everything Shooting. Today's episode is going to be an update from last week's episode. The shortage of gunpowder, and is it coming? Now, personally, yeah, I think we're going to see a shortage. I think we're going to see a shortage more than we've ever seen before. But, you know what? I could be totally wrong. But listen to the facts, and then let me know in the comments what you think. All right, let's get to the nuts and bolts of this. The Ukraine war is chewing up a lot of our gunpowder. And you say, well, you know, yes, yes, they're doing it. They're shooting off six to 7,000 artillery shells a day. They are consuming more munitions than we can produce. And let's just talk about that. The munitions that we produce. And I'm going to use artillery. That's, I'm just going to stick with that. Artillery shells. Artillery shells are made by General Dynamics. General Dynamics in their artillery shell factory in Florida can produce 11,000 artillery shells a month. That equals 132,000 shells for the year, with the Ukraines using 6,000 a day. That is 22 days worth of shells. That's a year of our production gone in 22 days. Now, how do we? hold up to those type of numbers. Well, let me tell you why I don't think we will hold up. The reason we won't hold up to those numbers is General Dynamics, their, their subsidiary, St. Mark's Powder, they produce 95% of all the gunpowder that's consumed through the federal government. Yeah, I said 95%. So that leaves a very small portion, 5%, for us in the sporting industry. Now, why do I think that's going to get even worse? Well, it's going to get worse because you've got... Uh, Hodgkin, you have Winchester buying a lot of the leftovers coming out of St. Mark's powder. That's only 5%. So that's not a whole lot when it comes down to it. Along with that, we have IMR, Accurate, and Ramsport. They, per they purchase small percentages of St. Mark's powder. So that 5% gets spread out pretty long there because they are definitely consuming a lot of powder. Now, let's talk why that's happening and what's going on. Okay, what's happening in the gunpowder industry this isn't rocket science. Gunpowder is charcoal, saltpeter, and sulfur. Now, in the comments from my last episode, there were a bunch of people that said, hey, the gunpowder in artillery shells is not the same as the gunpowder we shoot in our rifles and pistols. Well, you're right and you're wrong. Now, let me tell you why. Well, you're correct because the gunpowders that are used in the artillery shells actually have additives to them, which are agents that 
help line and coat the barrel in order to keep friction down. So there's an additive to it, but it still comes down to the same components, charcoal, saltpeter, and sulfur, okay? So when those are consumed, it affects all of us, no matter who you are. Now, if you're looking at production-wise, cars are being produced all over the world now. And America is having to buy a lot of their sporting gun powders from manufacturers outside the United States. So let's talk about that and who is producing and where they're coming from. Okay, so we know General Dynamics, they do 95% of all the government and they fill in with a bunch of other little companies, little shots. Well, PB Claremont out of Belgium, they produce for many different companies, but they produce for Accurate and Ram Sport here in America. Then we have ADI World Class Powders, which is out of Australia. They produce a lot of the AMR powders and the Accurate powders. So they're producing and shipping over here. Now you go to Bofus, which is a Sweden company, and they produce, again, for a lot of other companies, but a lot of Alliant powders are coming from Bofus. And why do we have so much of the gum powders being produced outside the United States? Well, let's just talk about it. It's really easy. The EPA has targeted the gum powder companies. They have made it very, very hard for a company to produce gunpowder in the United States. Hey, that's the government. Do you think that possibly there's an end game here? We've been sleeping at the wheel this whole time. Why haven't we been fighting the EPA? Why haven't we talked to our congressmen and our senators, senators and saying, hey, you're killing this industry. Nope, we've been sleeping at the wheel. And you know what? That's part of why I feel that we're due for a huge gunpowder shortage. So in synopsis of all of this, yes, I do feel we're going to have a powder shortage. Do I think it's going to be horrendous? I kind of think so. I think it's going to be, it's going to make reloading even harder. And you know what? The primer situation is tough. And I'm going to go over that in the next episode and talk about what's happening in that industry because that's an interesting industry in itself. But we can't have our gum powders being produced outside the United States. We need the availability to have more gum powder produced in the United States. That hinders us as sporting shooters and sporting reloaders to be able to do what we want to do. It hinders all the 2A people who enjoy their firearms and want to use their firearms. Because at any time, any of these manufacturers outside the United States cut us off, we're done. Our industry is done. So something to think about, something to Pick up the phone and talk to your representatives about something to talk about at the range. Hey, you know what? Things are going to get worse. They're not going to get better. They're going to get worse. We got to figure this out. But 
I had no clue that things were getting this bad this quick. So stick with me. I'll give you some more positive updates very, very quick. But you know what? I appreciate you. I appreciate what you're doing. You know, keep everything in sight. Do me a favor, subscribe. If you don't want to subscribe, like it. That helps the video get out to a lot of other people.